Welcome to Blind Level Tech. I'm Jonathan Price. I'm Evan Starnes. And together, we're bringing you news, tech, and information about blind technologies. Being blind doesn't mean you have to stop living. We're going to show you just how possible it is to live the life you want. Well, you know, my day has started. <laughs> I've done so many I've done so many shows already. I did a pre-show interview and did we did two episodes of The Blind Chick and those episodes are going to be fire. Dude, oh, absolute burn your face off, melt your face off fire. Um yeah, so definitely going to want to listen to those. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. How, how you sure. doing, man? How's your week been? Oh, it's been a pretty good week. Um, I, we got, as far as work-wise, got a lot done. A um, lot of little rebranding things I had to kink out in, broad, in the broadcast. We nice. figured out a really pesky and annoying issue with BLT. Sorry to the folks that couldn't yep. get BLT at the start. It was a funky little thing too. I didn't expect it to happen, but yeah, who knows? Uh, uh, who knew that ampersands and brackets uh, disabled your platform? Um, <laughs> yeah, what like a couple little just special little symbols? And who knew? I didn't even know there was such a thing as an RSS feed validator. But hey, those things are going to be useful now. And I, I'm going to use that every time I to, add a new program for sure. For sure, like, yeah, it's man. been a absolutely yeah. Like Evan said, thank you guys so much for bearing with us and for. Those of you who texted us back, <coughs> Kelvin, um, we, we appreciate <laughs> we appreciate the feedback, and uh, we're like, "Hey, where's your episode? I've been trying to listen to it." So we appreciate those comments. It means you guys are listening. And if you have Absolutely. feedback, if you have feedback, uh, shoot us a line seven two zero seven one two eight eight five six, or you can email us feedback at aftersight dot org. But um, yeah, Evan, anything else exciting happened this week? Uh, well, personal life. I got a couch, finally. Hey, there you go. Now I can sleep somewhere. Uh, yeah, exactly. And no more drinking the morning coffee in bed and wanting to fall back to sleep because I'm doing that. <laughs> well, you know, if you don't have a couch and you drink coffee in bed and you or you fall asleep, at least you're already in bed rather than the couch. So, I Yeah, mean, but that, then there's a the part where I wake up at like 8 o'clock. Oh, no, I got to get to work. That's true. Yeah. And I've been figuring out that complex. It's... I did my first load of laundry, which I don't know why that sounds like such a big accomplishment, but for whatever reason, because it was a laundromat, I was nervous. Oh, well, for sure. I can understand yeah. that, especially being in a new environment. It can be a little intimidating. Well, yeah. And I, for whatever reason, I don't like, I get bothered by people like, do you need help? No, oh, I know. Especially when I'm just doing stuff confidently, quickly. Like, it, it's, I know they're being nice, but it's just, it feels degrading. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I'm glad you brought that up because we're actually going to have on our show in a couple of weeks. His name is Darren, and they have this technology. They they use Bluetooth beacons, but they're used indoor and outdoor, and they're not navigation. It's sensory or it's um, uh, orientation-based and not navigation-based, which it, it's really cool. So being able to navigate around things like hotels or apartment complexes or laundromats or anything like that, uh, or even city parks or national parks even, has become very interesting. So, so he's going to be on the show in a couple of weeks, and I, he'll, yeah. it'll be amazing. I kind of consider that both, like orientation, navigation, they kind of coincide. But this It is, is and especially how they have it lined up and how they have it interfaced. You don't have to have any sort of service. You don't have to have – it's all free. Wow. It's all Bluetooth. It doesn't work. I mean, it, it it works when you don't have a cell phone signal because it's just reading Bluetooth. Right. That's awesome. So it's just a it's it's way cool. So that'll be coming up in a few weeks. So make sure you are tuning in for that. So today we have another question, and I'm really excited to pose this question because it's more. Um, I don't know what would you describe it as. Uh, well. It's philosoph- It's obviously very philosophical, very technical. Yeah. It actually is a very deep question with a lot of good, like, sub questions yeah. in it. Absolutely. And, oh, my gosh. Like, we might I, – I don't – I'm hoping we can go through it in this entire episode. Honestly. I know. We may have to make this a two-parter because this guest – or this, this person asks two questions. So, without further ado, let's hear the question. Hi. My name is Alex. I have a question for the hosts of Blind Level Tech, Jonathan Price and Evan. 
a couple questions I'd love you to answer in your next episode. My first one is about philosophy of accessibility or inclusive design or universal design. My specific question is, in what ways can the principles of universal design be better integrated into mainstream tech developments to benefit blind users? I'd love to hear you guys' take on that. Um, the other question I had um, was about more about tech policy and advocacy in law, especially as AI is coming about and, and there's not many laws that cover it yet. Um, so I'm wondering what role should policymakers play in ensuring new technologies are accessible from the outset? Uh, I'm particularly interested in the AI side, but also just of general new technologies, new websites as other things come out. Um, I'm curious if you all know anything about that and um, if you have any opinions. And yeah, I think those are all my questions for now. Um, I really appreciate your show. You guys are doing a great job and I'm excited to hear uh, your take. Have a great day. Bye. All right. Yeah, that was that. That's a lot of question. Um, yeah. And you may be a little confused by some of the the terminology that this listener used. Um, so we're going to go through this. And there's actually seven principles for uh, universal design. And so we'll hit them real quickly. I'll do an overcap of them, and then we'll kind of dive into each one specifically. So the first principle is there's equitable use flexibility in use, simple and intuitive use, perceptible information, guidelines, or sorry, perceptible information, tolerance for error, low physical effort, and then last one is size and space for approach and use. So let's start at the beginning. Right. When we talk about equitable use, where does blind technology or accessible technology how do we navigate or, or implement equitable use? How do we make that equitable, equitable, I can say that word, <laughs> across the board for everybody? Well, it's it's all about being – well, you said universal design. Um, I want to say universally accessible sure. to all and not specifically geared toward a particular market because right. – you, when you think of technology geared toward blind and low vision folks, you think like screen readers, braille displays, but I'm thinking more along the lines of kiosks and yeah. um, those big giant things that you used to order food with at McDonald's. I hate oh, them. Yeah. And, yes. um, and uh, oh, what's a, oh, the, the little transit fair, fair, some of the fair. Oh, like Ticket Hub. At, ticket, ticket yeah, stations. some of the ticket. Yeah, um, like I was at Denver Union Station and their thing wasn't accessible at all. But yeah. what I'm talking about is those particular technologies have to just be universally accessible and the accommodations, they, they shouldn't make it so you have to use the device completely differently. Like, right. Uh, let's look at ATM. Oh, I know. In order to use an ATM, you have to plug in earbuds. And I, I mean, I used to carry around a pair of old style earbuds with the three and a half millimeter headphone oh, connector yeah. on them all the time. Yep. But it's been a couple of years and everybody's got a pair of like AirPods or Bluetooth earbuds. So like that's that's something that, you know, it's it it really brings a barrier because if you don't have your earbuds, you're going to have to either go and grab them and then come back to the ATM or, yeah. oh, I don't know, ask. I, I've had to ask people for help using it, which I am not comfortable with at all. Right. Well, you want to make sure that you're providing the same means for all users and try to make them identical. Uh, you want to avoid kind of the segregation of it, I guess. That's the better word. That's a much better word for yeah, it. Yeah, because you don't want to you don't want to divide two people and then trying to make, you know, one thing work for one group of people and this other thing work for another group. And exactly. you want to make the design even in and of itself. I know we'll talk about this later, but website design, you want to make it appealing for all users. So that way, if it's not just like a, you know, a text format that people who are blind with low vision can use, but you also want to make it, you know, attractive for the visual community, because I can guarantee you that you, Evan, have friends or family members in your life that are sighted. So oh, I have loads of sightlings in my family, loads right. of sightling friends. And yeah, in fact, it's been said quite a lot. And it's it's a continuous um, point that's brought up to uh, web developers yeah. when it comes to making their sites accessible is that these changes that make your content accessible also benefit the 
just the whole platform yeah. of users because it makes it um, you know more possible. It just it just makes the site look nicer and more consistent. That's the other right. thing is because everything is formatted to be recognizable and work with screen readers properly. It looks consistent and it looks good. Yeah, for uh, sure. Well, visually. in the, in this in the second principle, we have flexibility in use. So you know, providing choice methods of use like accommodation. Like, I guess mm-hmm. I would equate this to like right or left handed. If if, if that can it, be a th- thing. Um, oh, that can definitely be a thing. Absolutely. Uh, facilitate accuracy and precision mm-hmm. uh, to make sure that it's, you know, has a lot of flexibility in that way. And well, then yeah. you, go ahead. And well, to be honest, I did a very Evanly thing here of kind of taking these seven little principles and melding them a, a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. So let's talk flexibility. At, let, here, here's a good example of something that is flexible. Um, and very common is those audible pedestrian signals that that are vocal. The, oh yeah, um, the because, ones that chirp at you. Yeah, and they are. By the way, I know people do find them annoying. They are kind of annoying sometimes. But um, the thing, the nice thing about them though is that you don't have to do anything special. You just push the right. button and you can press and hold it, and you know it'll tell you the street you're crossing, and that could be good for anybody. You know, yeah, that's a good example of you know. Flexibility and a different example would be controls on home appliances. For instance, mm, a lot of yeah. these new appliances, like we've said in the past, and it's very well known, are all flat paneled and touch sensitive buttons. Yeah. However, if you were to replace those annoying touch sensitive buttons with rubber buttons or whatever, like tactile buttons that are yeah. you know shapes that you can feel that. I mean, that that not only benefits us, you know, blind, low vision mm-hmm. folks out here, but that would benefit, you know, all the sightlings because it makes it easier to – it's just easier in the morning, you know, to – Yeah. When you're, you know, trying to use that whatever appliance to feel those buttons. For sure. So that's a good example. Yep. And, you know, just you just want to make it adaptable to Absolutely. whoever is using it. I mean, that's really the crux of it. Um, I guess principle three, simple and intuitive to use, uh, making it – Effective for everybody and make sure it's easy and it's not full of complicated back end user headphone jacks and oh, yeah, I mean, special buttons and especially when you know, and I love Apple, and this is my one diss on them is when they switched from the lightning or from the the three and a half headphone jack to the lightning port, yeah, that was just and then you had to buy a you know, proprietary you know, adapter from lightning to the 3.5, but now with Bluetooth, it, it's kind of helped kind of navigate that, but Absolutely. making sure that everything is simple and easy to use. What are your thoughts? Well, yeah, it's, and uh, I, I kind of went into this a few minutes ago. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it also just kind of goes to back to, you know, it benefits everybody involved. Yeah. Um, so Things that would not be simple to use, for instance, would be um, – I've heard of some kiosks and even voting machines and stuff that by default don't have a screen reader, but mm-hmm. they have to enable the screen reader. And usually you'll have to go ask some sightling to do it because there's no like right. keyboard shortcut or command to yep. enable it. Yep. Um, and so that's kind of an example. Um Another thing that's really unintuitive, and I'm surprised we haven't talked about this yet, are those self checkout machines. Oh, dude! Oh, dude! I hate none those. of them are accessible. I hate them at all. Every single self checkout I have seen, and I've been I've seen a lot of them, and I've played with a lot of them, are all touchscreen, and yep. they even had an accessibility button. And when I I was like, oh, I wonder what that does. And all it does is it just turns on the old voice prompts because I, I don't know if people have noticed, but they used to – when you'd scan an item, it would read your yeah. total. So you'd scan it and be like, five ninety nine. Right, yes. But they don't do that anymore. No. Unless you hit that accessibility button. So they've made them even worse. Yep. Yeah. But that's an example of something that ain't intuitive. Which actually goes right into principle number four because that is perceptible information being accessible. And like what you were saying with the self-checkout thing is one thing for me that just drives me insane is uh, gas station pumps. Because if it's cold outside or it's like the display is down, you you are you can't pump gas. 
you can't do anything. And so being able to have accessible information that is accessible for everybody is uh, quite imperative. I I need to be able to fill out my card. I don't know what else to call it, but, you know, it's like, yeah. Well, and it and it would be beneficial for folks that, especially what if it's, you know, snowing massive, you know, hardcore outside, you need to get home, but oh no, yeah. you've got less than a quarter tank of gas, um, you know, and you can't see because the snow's, you know, getting all over the screen of the gas pump. Why wouldn't it be beneficial to have like a little, a, a speaker that would announce like, you know, right. unleaded 85 octane or whatever, yeah. diesel, like yep. there's, I don't see a problem with that at all. No. And um, I also just, this is a, not like great, I don't know, uh, example, but I've also helped my friends pump gas in their cars before on road mm-hmm. trips. And, and I would like to be able to do that accessibly, like independently. Sure. Well, so. and we just went also through this kind of going a different way with this, but we went through uh, branding guidelines and how to brand our stuff. And so when we talked about things like font, graphics, we had to make sure that everything was accessible and it had to be visually appealing to those who were cited. And so we had to go through what fonts are acceptable, what styles are acceptable, how big should the font be. And then not only that, but our graphics had to be able to be read by screen readers and things like that. And so if you are using cases or I guess fonts that are not being able to be read by screen readers, you are putting not only yourself but the other person at a huge disadvantage because now you've broken down the barrier of communication or now you've broken the communication. Yeah. Um, And if you've got a platform that serves, you know, a a, a very wide customer base, you're just – you're eliminating customers from your customer base. I don't know how else to put it. Right. And the other interesting part too about these guidelines that we've been having to navigate is actually being able to read them accessibly because they were sent in this like big PDF with a bunch of weird right. graphics and alt text. And that's what um, Jonathan was getting at earlier when it comes to graphics mm-hmm. is alt text. The alt text that is hidden unless you have a screen reader. Right. Yep. And so y- there also has to be I know we can't all be 100% accessible all the time. And that's kind of the nature of the beast right now with our society and culture. And I don't want to blame it on that. But too many times the end user is not the goal. And there has to be a tolerance for error, which is principle number five. And there has to be a margin where it is accessible for many people or at least – and I, I don't want to say this nonchalantly, but the illusion or the, I guess, assumption that that is accessible. There are accessible work arounds. It may not be 100% accessible, but Evan, how many times have you run into something that is 100% accessible to where you could just do everything that you ever thought 100% straight up out of the box? Uh, a few times, I'd say maybe about four times out of ten. Yeah. Uh, the iPhone and Apple products actually being a great example. It seems sure. like any time they release a feature that they make, it somehow is accessible. Yeah. I don't. They're it's very cre- they're very creative with their. They they actually make their own workarounds, and those workarounds happen to integrate very well with Voiceover. So very very much. Uh, on occasion, and, you will, and it's a pleasant little surprise when it happens. Oh, I know. You're like, oh my goodness, this works. Yeah, like my buddy's got an oven that um, it's frigid. I think it's frigid air. And the cool part about that is, you know, it's got a nice, simple control interface. But the cool part is, is it does different pitched tones based on what you do. So if you hit the clear button, if you can't hit the clear button anymore, you get a double beep. And then if um, the cool part is, is the temperature settings, um, it doesn't wrap around. So you won't go from like 110 to 550. You know, it'll it'll just not let you continue anymore. Right. And so you you basically, if you want to set it to the lowest or highest setting, you just hold the button down until you hear double beep. And, um, you know, I was was pleasantly surprised. It was, you know, I'm sure to the company, just a cute little melodic feature that makes their their appliances sound, you know, cute and look cute. But for me, it it made it, you know, just a little, it's, it just made it a little more pleasant to use. Yeah. Yeah, for so. sure. And which kind of leads into the the last two, low physical effort and size. When I, 
I, when I think of low physical effort, there was a com, uh, comedian who would say, yeah, I don't really want to eat cheese. I don't want to go to the grocery store and then go to my refrigerator and then slice the cheese. And then, <laughs> you know, I would be more willing to eat cheese if, I don't know, I could just move my finger and use the spray feature on the spray cheese, spray can of cheese. <laughs> so oh, gross. It was just, I know, it's super gross. But <laughs> it reminds me of the low physical effort. And I think there's something to be said for low physical effort when it comes to accessibility and technology, uh, just maintaining, cre- uh, being able to use the same body position even. Uh, like exactly. If, if you're at a standing desk or you need to sit down or, you know, m- making those things accessible, um, you don't have to push buttons very hard uh, to get them to operate. Um, no, yeah. Like my grandparents have a couch where you just press a little button on the side and boom, a little recliner piece comes out yeah. and it just leans you back. It charges your phone. Like that's low physical effort for sure. Um, now, of course, I being myself and full of these great examples, I want to <laughs> do, I want to give another example of something that isn't low physical effort because it's yes. fun. Yeah. Um, and I want to also just have another opportunity to rip on ATMs. I'm, yes, I'm glad I can use the ATM. <laughs> I, I, I admit, I know they weren't accessible. I know, but still, the way that you use these bloody things when you plug in your your headphones is all from the keypad. So it's like for right. a deposit, press one. Yeah. For a withdrawal, press two. Yeah. And you, often you're ha- you're standing there for a minute listening to the, to this thing give you instructions on how to use the darn thing. Yep. And then you know, often you know, I'm using the lobby one. You got people waiting behind you in line, and you're like, <sighs> well, okay, I'm trying to quick. You if know. you're not using headphones, everybody can hear what you're doing. And that's why they have the headphone jack, right. but then nobody has the headphone jack. Right. That's exactly right. So so the last one, size and space for approach and use. Um, I don't even know. Actually. So I think when I hear the size and space for approach, like clear lines of sight, I'm assuming. Um, I would think make so. It, make it easily seen and that oh, like – um, like we were talking about these Bluetooth beacons and things that are accessible that are, you know, really yeah. big and obnoxious and like, hey, I'm this is for our disabled people and we need to do this and that, that, like that's they stand a little out. obnoxious. Yeah, um, we don't like it. Like I as a blind person, I don't want my accommodations. I, I I like my I love my white cane. I love my semi cane. Sure, but I don't want. You know, often we just want to blend in and well, you just want so, to make sure that whatever you're using accommodates like your hands fully size. accommodates you, but also isn't going to be like super impractical. Right. Yeah. So you, like, yeah, Bluetooth beacons are actually a fantastic example because they're they're very they're practical. I don't I mean, I'm, they're mm-hmm. not my favorite, but they're practical. They're well hidden. Yeah. And they're little. They're like the size of an ice cube. Right. And, and so nobody even will notice them. Now, on the other hand, if they're like the size of a laptop and, you know, had to be set on wheels right. all over the place. Yeah, that would it would be harder to sell that yeah. kind of technology. So, yeah, so I really like that question. Um, real quick, let's try to touch on, we have a few more minutes. Let's try to touch on this other part of the question. And if you didn't, if, if you don't remember what that second part of the question was, we're going to play just the second part for you again. Um, so I'm wondering what role should policymakers play in ensuring new technologies are accessible from the outset? Uh, I'm particularly interested in the AI side, but also just of general new technologies, new websites as other things come out. Um, I'm curious if you all know anything about that and um, if you have any opinions. All right. So where do where do you go from many companies start out, they don't start with the end in mind, right? They, they come no. at it from a... Uh, Let's build this product and let's, let's see what happens. Right. And they do, they take accessibility kind of at the base model. We just want to make sure people can get in the building, you know, mm-hmm. and that's exactly. about it. So yeah. where can people start, especially with websites and technology, because it's a technology podcast, but even going into things like physical buildings and grocery stores, whatever. Navigation, technology, all that. Exactly. Well, where do they start? I want I want to just say embrace the term 
um, and it's not mine, Born Accessible. In fact, it was a project. Yeah. Um, I have, I don't, I forget who started it, but I heard it on a podcast a couple of years ago. And that is that, yeah, you just consider accessibility from the get go always. And mm-hmm. Um, don't even con- like think about if you're developing a product. Don't even think about accessibility from a you know blind low vision or an accessible standpoint. Think of it from a benefits all standpoint. Is what I'd like to. Is, that's what I firmly say. Yeah, but um, so yeah, when, I think it's easier. At least I'm. Uh, I'm going to assume that it's easier to build a website from an accessibility standpoint and then make it graphically appealing uh, that's a great point to to those people than it is to take something that you have spent like we said choosing your font and your graphics and making sure those are accessible if you start with it accessible from the start then you can kind of navigate within and i hate using this term but it kind of works here you're working within a parameter or a box and there is a lot of freedoms in this box and the technology that is surrounding the blind community is expanding to such a degree that Screen readers are now reading more graphics than they ever could, and they're reading more fonts and text sizes. So you're not constrained to like, and I know this is not an accessible text, but Times New Roman, if you like that, and this is the first one that popped up, or Comic Sans, or like any of those really old, antiquated, you know, Yeah, exactly. But you will now have the more, you'll have more freedom to... Operate in that box, if you will, and be creative and make it accessible because both technologies and both communities are working toward the same goal. We want everything to be accessible. Exactly. And you're going to have more freedom with um, with that type of um, – with these guidelines too mm-hmm. because, um, yeah, as Jonathan said – technology we've gotten to the point where you can actually hear like what a graph like what a yeah a graph sounds yeah. like for instance auditorily mm-hmm. so we are we are really getting to that point plus if you if you spend hours or days months you know setting up your website making it all purdy and yeah and then oh no it's not accessible yeah you're going to spend hours having to backtrack and you know just it save yourself the time well, you're going to do more work on the back end, and then you're going to have to say to your clients, I'm sorry, we're changing our platform to be more accessible, and our graphics are going to look a little bit different. Our fonts are going to look a little bit different. Yep. And the honest reality is is that there are people who get really upset about that, and they say, well, they changed their website. I'm leaving. I can't figure this out. I'm done. Yeah, well, because people don't like change. It could, right. it could, yeah, it could kind of bite your brand a little bit. Not quite hurt it, but yeah. It, yeah. it very well could. Well, this has been a, a very interesting discussion. And speaking about biting your brand, Evan, that makes me hungry. Mm-hmm. Yum. Me too. You know what it's time for then? I do. The sandwich of the week. All right. So I have a sandwich right off the top. And okay. Go it, ahead. It's, it's an open-faced pulled pork and green chili sandwich. It's really good. Oh. It's just like pulled pork smothered with green chili. Taught that sucker with some cheese, cut it up. Oh man, it's it's pretty good. Dude, so that pulled pork and green chili is a combination I didn't even think was possible, but that's amazing. Yeah, but you don't barbecue it. It's not barbecued pulled pork. It's just like really soft, fall apart, and then you just kind of mix it all up with green chili. It's oh, it's 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 delicious for mm. sure. <laughs> what about you? Mine's gonna be a um, not not from anywhere or any brand in particular, but a. Big old closed chicken sandwich nice. with um, with lettuce, with um, got to have pickle, onion. I don't do tomato. No. But it's nice and healthy and full of protein. And uh, I haven't really mentioned anything with chicken on here for a while. So yeah. I love so it. That's, yeah. That's mine. I really like it. Well, this has been a fun show. And just to remind everybody, if you have a guest question or you want to ask us a question, leave us some feedback at feedback at aftersight.org or give us a phone call where you can have your voice on our show, 720-712-8856. And we also have a promotion. Evan, what's that promotion? Yeah, so you can actually get you can actually leave personal shout outs to a friend, a family member, a loved one on one of our um Aftersight originals. And we have a promo code come out for Valentine's Day. And so 
it's 10 bucks a shout out, but if you if you use the promo code love, you're going to get 50% off that bad boy. Bow chicka bow wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For all you lovebirds out there. Yeah. All right, and if Valentine isn't, you know, really your thing, we've got we're going to be running promotions all year long, so check back with us and we'll give you some really cool promotion uh codes if you, you know, somebody's selling a birthday, a graduation, Father's Day, Mother's Day, you know, you know, a wedding, you, a wedding. You got a job promotion. You got a job, or you know, whatever. You retired. That's a really good one. Yeah, go, go ahead and give those shout outs. We'll read them on air uh, at the beginning of our episodes, and uh, so please you can, keep it clean. Yeah, pl- please. We're not going to read any of that raunchy stuff, especially for Valentine's Day. Man, that stuff can get nasty. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. So, anyway. It has been such a fun time talking with you, Evan. I hope you have a fantastic week. And for the staff and all the family at Aftersight, for Evan Starnes and Jonathan Price, don't forget to plug in your devices and stay warm. Stay warm.